I bought this Sinclair Spectrum Plus 2 as spares or repairs. As we can see it looks pretty good. But I was told it was used for parts because the tape deck was broken and looking inside we can see a couple of missing items. There should be a big metal heatsink here to cool the regulator that's also missing. But everything else seems present I think. Well someone has repurposed all the screws. These built in tape decks have a couple of common faults but first we'll need to see if the mainboard is running. And we're going to do that right now. Mark fixes stuff. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services or browse a library of talented makers designs, add them to your cart and have them delivered directly to your door. The first problem is power. We have this generic 5 volt buck regulator. This costs about 30 pence from China. I know it's cheap but it puts out 5 volts and allegedly at 1.5 amps. The traditional 7805 regulator would plug in here next to the tape deck connector. I'm not sure how much I trust the cheap part though, so I don't think I'll be soldering it directly to the board. The advantage of a buck regulator is that it's much more efficient, doing away with the need for a heatsink so it's worth a try. Of course you can get branded buck regulators that are trusted but over 20 times the price so this is a worthwhile experiment and can be easily changed. With that in mind we're going to temporarily attach it with some DuPont cables. The buck regulator is pin compatible with the standard 78 series regulator so we just need to connect the cable straight through pin to pin. We'll just route it out of the back for testing. For video we'll be using this Retro Computer Shack RGB SCART cable. Wiggling it into the port snugly. The cable also comprises an audio jack that we'll need to slip into the other port. Once we have the main computer running we can investigate what's wrong with the tape deck and I have a few ideas. We'll be able to check if the keyboard is functioning as well. The keyboard membranes on these models are quite robust and don't fail too often. If they don't work it's usually dust bunnies between the layers that need to be cleaned out. And let's connect up the data set. We'll need to find some screws too. Where are the gummy crew? For 9 volt power we could just plug straight into the back. But I have this really handy mini switched extension from ZX Renew. Link below. Here goes nothing. Remarkably it bursts into life. I'm pleased but I'm a bit shocked. The keyboard is also working great. It all seems a bit too easy. Time to take a look at the tricky tape deck. Pressing play gives us no movement on the tape spools and a low hum coming from the mechanism. The left spool spins freely as it should whilst the right spool just has resistance from the gearing. Pushing down on the pinch roller allows the spindle to rotate a little before it slows down and stops again. You can just about see it moving here and this is a big clue to the problem. 
Let's power down and check out if my hunch is correct. The mainboard seems to be working so far, so we can pop it to one side for now. I think the problem lies here. Now a lot of you are probably yelling change the belts, but I don't think that's the issue. We will be changing them for a fresh set, but there's actually resistance on this flywheel and I'm going to show you a common reason why. The spring retention hat on the pause latching mechanism has come loose and is fouling the flywheel. This piece of white plastic is meant to be stuck down and not popped up and not in contact with the flywheel. Luckily it's an easy fix. Unhooking the belts we need to pop the flywheel off the spindle. The wheel just pulls up and off. Some people use their fingers but I find the force required can make the bits go flying as the wheel comes off. Instead I prefer to lever the wheel gently whilst pulling it upwards. It makes for a much more controlled removal. This is the other end of the pinch roller spindle. Note the small washer. It's best to remove that now so that we don't lose it. And here we have the guilty party. This little hat is meant to stay on the post and keep the spring tension on the pause latching mechanism. But they tend to split over time and then they can no longer grip their spigot. We'll add a small blob of gel type superglue. I don't use the runny stuff for obvious reasons. Then we gently place the hat back on, holding it in position until it's stuck firmly. After about 10 minutes we check the pause latching mech is in place. Give it a wiggle and it'll drop into the groove. Before we reinstall the flywheel, now is a good time to apply a small amount of silicon grease to the spindle. The spindle is removed from the cassette door side. If you lose track of which end is which, the slightly shorter end of the rod is the cassette side. Do make sure that your grease is specified as plastic safe. This means that it has a low mineral oil content and won't degrade any plastic parts. Close the cassette door. This is the only thing stopping the spindle from actually dropping the whole way out. And I almost forgot something. That dinky washer. One last check of the latching mechanism before we reinstall the flywheel and test our fix. I just need to hold this in position with my thumb so that I can get the flywheel installed part way. Make sure the smaller pulley is on the underside. Then push the flywheel on as much as you can against your thumb. I can't push it all the way because it hurts a bit. When it's loose like this it's no good. Grabbing something to brace the flywheel on, I flip the unit over. Then using a flat tip of a screwdriver I can push the spindle all the way home. 
you'll probably find that you'll push it too far and then the flywheel won't rotate. Just use the screwdriver as a lever to gently back it off a few millimetres. When the machine is upside down the wheel won't run totally freely because of friction on the washer, so test it sideways. And we can see that we have good clearance of our repaired pause latching mechanism. Now that the glue is dry we can test the latching by manipulating the underside of the pause key. Let's put some fresh belts on. The smaller belt is AV belt 74 from CPC Farnell. Pull it on over the top of the pause latching mechanism so that it clears the part we glued. And don't worry about keeping the belt straight. A square section belt should auto correct itself. Perfect. The larger belt is AV belt 107 and is much easier to fit. Just make sure that the belts are running freely. If turning the flywheel means that the other pulleys turn, it's usually a good sign. I also like to check continuity between the earth points on the board and the metal chassis of the tape deck. The board relies on these points for its operation and if the connection is poor it can cause errors such as failure to load. Mainly we want to check that this middle connection has continuity to the chassis. If not, clean the contact points with IPA. Let's also give the head a quick clean before we test our fix. We'll use a cotton bud soaked in isopropyl alcohol to gently clean the heads. We'll give it a quick dusting out whilst we're here as well. Nineties DNA, nice. This loose board is an annoyance and makes testing harder, so let's screw that down. A lot of the time I find that M3 screws are the right choice for vintage stuff. I usually have a selection of various lengths on hand for tasks such as these. We'll use the shorter 6mm M3 screws to fix the board down. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Since global events wiped out my income, I've been working flat out to make my dream of being a full-time YouTuber a reality. If you'd like to help me produce more content like this, maybe you could become a patron at patreon.com forward slash markfixesstuff. With the board fixed down, it's finally time to test our work. Power on. And let's see how the tape transport mechanism is behaving. Rewind is working well and has good resistance to the touch. Fast forward is also working. And play now moves and has a good amount of torque in my estimation. But really we need to load something to test if our fix has worked. I like to quickly fast forward and rewind old tapes to check that they're not stuck or binding together. With the tape checked and ready, it's time to test loading. And that's a great sign, but is it cause for celebrations? The tape rolls smoothly with fluid rotations.
and the load is successful. After a couple of plays, I'm unsure if this is a good game. But look who's turned up now that the work is done. Probably expecting to play games all afternoon. I have a great game for you guys. It's called the Screwing the Spectrum Plus 2 Case Back Together Again game. And it's your turn. I want to thank my amazing Patreon supporters here on the screen right now. Patrons make this channel possible and they get ad-free early access to videos. You can join them at the link below. Thanks for watching this video. Here's some others that you might enjoy. Bye. Terry, put Dave down and stop mucking about.